Hey, good morning. Welcome to Wednesday morning. Manna, are you neglecting the gifts that God has entrusted to you? In this morning's devotional, we're going to confront the sin of burying our talents. We are going to um, urge ourselves to take bold action and to fulfill the responsibility of multiplying what God has invested in you. Before we do that, I just want to again welcome you. My name is Pastor Lexi Johnson. I am super excited to be here. I am uh, the pastor of Kingdom Disciples Training Center, and we're all about winning souls and making disciples. So every message that we bring, whether it is a, a devotional on Wednesday morning manna, or whether it's a Bible study um, on, on Sabbath, uh, we are just really excited about being commissioned to make more disciples. So welcome this morning. Just want to share with you um, a couple of announcements before we read our scripture and keep going. Um, you still have an opportunity to give if you're looking for a giving opportunity and you want to give to the poor because the Bible calls us to give to the poor. If you want to do that, we have a couple of opportunities for you right in um, the description. We are still, even though we have not made our Botswana trip as of yet, we are still raising the funds um, to purchase the land. We'll be sending the funds over um, ahead of us um, until we uh, reschedule dates uh, for that trip. And then um, also we support the Praise Academy. It's Praise Academy in Lakoni County, Mombasa, uh, Kenya. And so they are doing great things over there. This school started just this year in January. Um, they started with, uh, I guess, what we would call like a preschool or K. And now, um, thanks to donations uh, from all over the place, not just our ministry, um, and their you know, dedicated members of their community. Um, they are putting together a, they are putting together, they are putting in the foundation of a new building, okay, so that they can begin their first grade um, in their new school year. So um, we are grateful and humbled to be a part of that. So information, if you want to give towards either one of those is in the description. Also want to share with you information about um, a fabulous retreat that I love to attend uh, every year. I think I've only missed one or two. But anyway, um, listen, it's time to gear up, y'all. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over, the pres over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's Ephesians 6, 12. And so in this year where you have said, have you said things? Well, where you said things have to be different, right? Um, you were taking on challenges. You're taking your challenges head on. You've been in an uphill battle trying to march through uncharted territory while being met with unexplained resistance. That is the sound of spiritual warfare. And this year, there is an answer for your fight. And of course, that answer is God. And so if you are ready for a transformative year, then you have to gear up and get ready for what's ahead. And so what's ahead, it is the P3 retreat that is coming November 14th through the 17th, 2024, hosted by none other than my, uh, I call her my soul twin, Erica Etienne. Um, it's going to be in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. The link is in the description. It is uh, the P3 retreat. So wwwp 3 retreat dot info. Make sure you secure your seat. I would love to see you there. Okay. All right. So let's get to this morning's word. Our scripture today is coming from first Peter chapter four, verse 10. I'm reading from the new living translation. And it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. I love this scripture. Um, I just love the, the way the NLT puts this particular scripture. 
It says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety because there are a great variety of spiritual gifts and everyone has at least one. Okay. So if you are sitting here saying you do not have a spiritual gift, you are wrong. Okay. God has given everyone at least one. And he asks that we use them well to serve one another. Well, let's pray and let's get into our devotional. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for who you are. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who is with us at this moment in time that we might um, make uh, have wisdom and understanding, that we will have the power and the boldness not only to hear your word, but to do your word. This is our prayer in the name of Yahusha. Amen and amen. Well, listen, I hope that you have your favorite notebook, your favorite writing utensil, um, your Bible, and, you know, a healthy drink or a healthy meal in front of you. Um, Let's get ready and dig into the Word of God. So today's devotional is entitled, Stewarding Your Gifts, God's Investment, Your Responsibility. Okay, again, that's stewarding your gifts, God's investment, your responsibility. Give me just a moment. All right, let's go. So the church, and when I say church, you almost understand that I am very rarely referencing the buildings with four walls. I am talking about you and I. Um, because that is the definition, um, the ecclesia. It is the people who are a part of the kingdom of God, who are on a very political, yes, political assignment. The church today, you and I, full of dormant gifts, talents that are either hidden or outright wasted. Listen, if you haven't already, I want to pause and take a moment and ask you, please share this message out. Someone may need this encouragement today, okay? So today, on the kingdom of God on earth, full of dormant gifts and talents that are either hidden or they are outright wasted. Many believers walk around as if their gifts are optional extras. Uh-huh. You heard me. Yep. I said it. Many believers are walking around as if their gifts are optional extras, okay? Something to be used only when it's convenient. But I want us to get real this morning. God did not give you those gifts. He did not give me those gifts for us to sit on a, for for them to sit on a shelf collecting dust. That is not what he gave them for. Everything that God gives us has a purpose. And it is, um, you know, we're, we are created um, to worship. So even how we use our gifts, how we steward our gifts is part of how we worship him. See, he has invested in you and he expects a return on that investment. Listen, how many of you, okay, how many of you make an investment and don't expect any kind of return? I don't know about you, but even in the earthly realm, okay, when we are talking about making an investment, it could be an investment in real estate. It could be an investment in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and other kinds of paper assets. It could be an investment in alternative assets like crypto or art or something like that. It can be an investment in people, right? We expect a return. We expect a return. And so why... Should we be surprised that what God has invested in us, what he put in you from before you were in your mother's womb, why should we expect that he does not expect a return on that investment? But if you are not using your gifts, you're not just being lazy, you are being disobedient. If you're not using your gifts, then that means it is highly likely that you are not walking in your purpose. And if you're not walking in your purpose, which is, by the way, the highest form of worship that we can give him, then you're being disobedient. Mm -hmm. I said it. I'm calling it out today. You are being disobedient 
obedient, okay? You guys, you know what I forgot to do? Give me one second. I'm so sorry. I forgot to uh, share this to my personal page. Share it now. All right. I asked you all to share and I forgot to share. Isn't that crazy? All right. So if we're not using our gifts, we're, being, we're not just being lazy, okay? We are being full on disobedient. I need us to understand that, okay? So the use of our gifts are not optional. It is our responsibility. Our main scripture again, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, God has given each of you, that means you, and you, and you. He has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So it didn't say use them sparingly, use them every now and then. Use them only when you feel like it's convenient. That's not what it says. It says use them well and use them well to do what? He gave them to us to serve one another. That's why he gave us our gifts, All right? Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30 happens to be one of, one of my most favorite parables of all time, the parable of the talents, where a master entrusts his servants with talents, expecting them to invest and multiply what was given to them. This expectation of um, taking what we are given, investing, producing, investing and multiplying, right? Dominating. This is not a new expectation. This is a mandate that was given to man in Genesis chapter one, verse 28. So in other words, at the very beginning, all right? So here are some key points. Gifts are not optional. They are your responsibility. That's key point number one. Okay. Gifts are not optional. They are your responsibility. Too many kingdom citizens are sitting on their gifts, thinking it's enough to just show up on a Saturday or on a Sunday or whatever day you go to church. Listen, newsflash, okay? God didn't give you gifts for your comfort, and he certainly didn't, didn't give them to you for your convenience, okay? Many who are out here doing a work will tell you a lot of what we're doing is not convenient. I would prefer because I because I own my own business, I do not have to be up this early. I really don't, okay? I would prefer right now to be uh, rolling over and getting a few more weeks, okay? But so using our gifts is not about comfort and it's not about convenience. We are not doing God a favor by using our gifts. And sometimes we can act like that. We act like we're doing this him a favor. The truth is, is that he is doing you a favor by letting you be part of his plan. Listen, y'all, we don't have, can we just, can we just understand that we do not have to, God does not have to let us be part of his plan. Like he could literally do all of this on his own. Literally. He has no need. No need. Okay. Uh, for us in the technical sense, right? The parable of the talent shows us that God expects action, not excuses. The servant who buried his talent wasn't just lazy. He was wicked and lazy. That's what it says. Okay. He was wicked and lazy. Let that sink in. Are we being wicked and lazy? Mercy. So key point number two, hoarding your gift is sinful. Hoarding your gift is sinful. So we like to talk about sin in terms of what we shouldn't do, right? Lying, cheating, stealing. We all know those are things that we should not do. But what about sins of omission? What about the sin of just not using what God has given you? See, oftentimes we don't really look at that as sin, right? But it is just as much sin as lying or cheating or any or stealing or anything else. If you're not using your gifts, you are robbing God. If you're not using your gifts, then you are also robbing the people 
around you. Why? Because in 1 Peter 4.10, it says, use them well and use them to serve others. So our gifts are not for our own, okay, purposes and use. They are for, the, for um, us to worship God and they are for us to serve others. We are withholding, you are withholding something that was meant to bless others. And that's not just irresponsible. It is sinful. All right, key point number three, and then we're going to move into some practical application. God expects a return on his investment. We've already had this discussion. If any one of us on this earth made an investment, we expect a return. Even if you invest in yourself and you take some classes or some courses, right? You expect that you're going to learn some things that you are going to then use to yield you a return, whatever that return may be, okay? God is the ultimate investor and he doesn't invest in anything without the expectation of a return. That is the bottom line. Whatever he put in you from before he had you open your eyes on this earth, he is definitely expecting a return. The talents that he's given you, you are meant, those are meant for you to multiply. If you are content with maintaining the status quo, then you, ma'am, you, sir, you, young ma'am, you, young sir, are missing the point. The servant who hid his talent thought that he was playing it safe. But he was condemned for his lack of faith and he was condemned for his lack of initiative. God does not reward stagnation. I'm going to say it again. God does not reward stagnation. What he rewards is production. What he rewards is multiplication. What he rewards is is domination. That is what he rewards. That is the Genesis 128 mandate, you all. So let's talk about some practical application because for a lot of you, it's time to get uncomfortable because it's not comfortable. Trust, okay? Trust me. It is not comfortable. Some of you may think that it is easy for me to get up and get in front of a crowd because I've been doing it for so long. So whether it's virtual or whether it's, um, you know, physical and, and face to face, some of you may think that it's just absolutely easy for her to get up there in front of a crowd. You all have, well, maybe some of you do, but a lot of you have no idea. It is the last place that I want to be. It is the last place that I want to be. Never in a million years did I ever imagine or anticipate that I would be speaking in front of other people. Mm -mm. No. Okay. So it's time to get unco uncomfortable. And, and, and that's just one of my gifts, right? I never imagined any of it. <laughs> okay. It's time to get uncomfortable. It's time to identify your gifts. You can't just think about them. Okay. Time for you to write them down and then ask yourself, are you using these gifts or are you letting them go to waste? And if you're not using them, it's time to repent and to take action. Yes, I said repent because it is sinful. OK, it is disobedient. It is almost downright wicked not to use what God has given you. So step one. Pray for God to show you where you have been neglecting your gifts. Maybe you have been putting your paycheck before your gifts. Maybe you've been putting family life and all kinds of things before your gift. Ask God to show you where you've been neglecting your gift. Be honest with yourself about where you've been lazy and or fearful. Okay? Be honest about be honest about it. Where have you been lazy or where have you been fearful? And then ask God not only to show you where you've been neglecting your gift, but ask God to show you how you begin, how you can begin using that gift immediately. Okay. Step two, commit to using your gifts this week. It doesn't have to be anything super huge. Okay. Whether it's volunteering, whether it's starting a new project, 
with it simply just offering your skills to help someone in need, do something this week that stretches you, okay? It could be a little thing. It could be a big thing. Whatever it is that God shows you to do, do it this week, okay? Or do some fraction of it this week. Step number three, share your experience with a trusted friend or a mentor. Um, accountability is key to making sure that you stay on track. Listen, I know I need accountability, right? I need accountability in my life, so I don't shy away from it. I know that if I don't have accountability in my life, that I'm going to slack off. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to slack off. I am going to, um, you know, give every excuse in the book or maybe not every excuse, but I'll give some excuses at time. And then I'm going to let myself, I'm, I'm going to accept those excuses and, 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 and um, not hold myself accountable. Some of us want to say, well, I can hold myself accountable. Good luck with that. Okay. Let's see how far you actually get. You can get farther faster when you allow yourself to be accountable, okay, to someone or to a, um, an organization or to an entity or to a group. Now, I'm not saying these people, you know, have um, complete authority over you. That's not what I'm saying. I said accountability. All right. So that's what that's the practical application that you can put in place right now. As soon as we get done, pray to, for, pray to God, show you where you've been neglecting your gifts. Okay. Commit to using your gifts this week and then share your experience with a trusted friend or a mentor for accountability's sake. God didn't give you gifts so you could hoard them. He didn't give you gifts so that you could only use them when they're convenient. Good morning, Apostle. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm just looking at comments. He didn't give you these gifts to use only when it's convenient. He didn't give them for you to use only for your own selfish gain. No, he gave them to you and he gave them to you with an expectation. He is expecting a return. He is expecting you to do something with what he's placed inside of you. So you can either, kingdom citizen, rise to that challenge or you can bury the talent in the ground. It's your choice, but make no mistake about it. You're going to be held accountable. You may not have to, you may not, um, you know, reach out and have someone hold you accountable here on earth, but I promise you, you're going to help be held accountable regardless. Okay. And we're going to be held accountable by God because he expects a return on his investment. So rise to the challenge or bury the talent. The choice is yours. Father, forgive us for the times that we have buried our gifts, O oh Lord. Forgive us, Father, for um, operating in fear and wondering what people will think or what will they say, or I don't know if I have the ability or the resources or the time or the stamina or whatever it is, Father God. And a lot of it at the at the foundation of it is fear, oh Lord. Forgive us, Lord, because you did not give us this the, the spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind, oh Lord. And so, Father, today we are asking, oh Lord, that you show us, Father, where we have been neglectful and where we have been neglectful, Lord, oh Lord, we repent, Father God. We repent for not using the gifts that you have given us for not producing them, for not multiplying them, for not dominating in them, O oh Lord. We ask your forgiveness, O oh Lord. And not only do we repent, do we confess, repent, and ask for your forgiveness, but Father, we declare right now that we come out of agreement with the enemy. That's right, because our not using our gifts is making a micro agreement with the enemy. And Father, we are not do not want to be in agreement with the enemy. So we come out of agreement with the enemy. We renounce this micro agreement with the enemy and we come in alignment with your perfect will for our lives, O oh Lord. From today forward, may we steward our gifts according to that Genesis 128 mandate. May we steward our gifts according to 1 Peter 4 that calls us to use our gifts well and to serve one another. This is our prayer 
In the name of Yahusha, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, listen, I pray that this message was an encouragement to you today. I pray that you will take those practical application steps and that you will put them into action, right? Take a moment and and do that right now. And I look forward to seeing how God uses you out in these um, social media streets. And then maybe for some of us, we actually get to physically meet in spaces and serve one another through the well use of our gifts. God uh, be with you and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Let's win souls. Let's make disciples.